November 28, 1912 Translation by Sri Aurobindo The outer life, the activity of each day and each instant, is it not the indispensable complement of our hours of meditation and contemplation? And is it not the proportion of time given to each the exact image of the proportion which exists between the amount of effort to be made for the preparation and realization? For meditation, contemplation, union is the result obtained, the flower that blooms. The daily activity is the anvil on which all the elements must pass and repass in order to be purified, refined, made supple and ripe for the illumination which contemplation gives to them. All these elements must be thus passed one after the other through the crucible before outer activity becomes needless for the integral development. Then is this activity turned into the means to manifest thee so as to awaken the other centers of consciousness to the same dual work of the forge and the illumination. Therefore, our pride and satisfaction with oneself, the worst of all obstacles. Very modestly, we must take advantage of all the minute opportunities offered to knead and purify some of the innumerable elements to make them supple to make them impersonal, to teach them forgetfulness of self and abnegation and devotion and kindness and gentleness. And when all these modes of being have become habitual to them, then are they ready to participate in the contemplation and to identify themselves with Thee in the supreme concentration. That is why it seems to me that the work must be long and slow even for the best and that striking conversions cannot be integral. They change the orientation of the being. They put it definitively on the straight path. But truly, to attain the goal, none can escape the need of innumerable experiences of every kind and every instant. O Supreme Master, who shinest in my being and each thing. Let thy light be manifest and the reign of thy peace come for all. December 2nd, 1912 Translation by Sri Aurobindo. So long as one element of the being, one movement of the thought is still subjected to outside influences, not solely under thine, it cannot be said that the true union is realized. There is still the horrible mixture 
without order and light for that element that movement is a world a world of disorder and darkness as is the entire earth in the material world as is the material world in the entire universe December 3rd 1912 Translation by Sri Aurobindo Last night I had the experience of the effectivity of confident surrender to thy guidance When it is needful that something should be known one knows it and the more passive the mind to thy illumination the clearer and the more adequate is its expression i listen to thee as thou spokest in me and i would have liked to write down what thou saidst so that the formula in all its precision might not be lost for now i should not be able to repeat what was said then i thought that this care for conversation was again an insulting lack of confidence towards thee for thou canst make of me all that i need to be and in the measure in which my attitude allows thee to act on me and in me thy omnipotence has no limits to know that at each instant what must be surely is as perfectly as is possible for all those who know how to see thee in everything and everywhere no more fear no more uneasiness no more anguish nothing but a perfect serenity an absolute confidence a supreme unwavering peace December 5 1912 Translation by Sri Aurobindo In peace and silence the eternal manifests Allow nothing to disturb you and the eternal will manifest Have perfect equality in face of all and the eternal will be there yes we should not put too much intensity too much effort into our seeking for thee the effort and intensity become a veil in front of thee we must not desire to see thee for that is still a mental agitation which obscures thy eternal presence it is in the most complete peace serenity and equality that all is thou even as thou art all and the least vibration in this perfectly pure and calm atmosphere is an obstacle to thy manifestation no haste no inquietude no tension thou nothing but thou without any analysis or any objectivizing and 
Thou art there, without a possible doubt, for all becomes a holy peace and a sacred silence. And that is better than all the meditations in the world. December 7, 1912 Translation by Sri Aurobindo Like a flame that burns in silence, like a perfume that rises straight upward without wavering, my love goes to thee. And like the child who does not reason and has no care, I trust myself to thee, that thy will may be done, that thy light may manifest, thy peace radiate, thy love cover the world. When thou willest, I shall be in thee, thyself, and there shall be no more any distinction. I await that blessed hour without impatience of any kind letting myself flow irresistibly toward it as a peaceful stream flows toward the boundless ocean. Thy peace is in me, and in that peace I see thee alone, present in everything, with the calm of eternity. December 10, 1912 Translation by Sri Aurobindo O Supreme Master, Eternal Teacher, it has been once more granted me to verify the unequaled effectivity of a full confidence in Thy leading. Thy light was manifested through my mouth yesterday and it met no resistance in me. The instrument was willing, supple, keen of edge. It is Thou who art the doer in each thing and each being and he who is near enough to Thee to see thee in all actions without exception, will know how to transform each act into a benediction. To abide always in thee is the one thing that matters, always and ever more and more in thee, beyond illusions and the deceptions of the senses not drawing back from action, refusing it, rejecting it, a struggle useless and pernicious, but living thee alone in the act, whatever it may be, ever and always thee. Then the illusion is dispelled, the falsehoods of the senses vanish. The bond of consequences is broken. All is transformed into a manifestation of the glory of Thy eternal presence. <laughs>